Well, good evening and welcome to Church Without Boundaries this lovely June evening. First of June and you can see that the uh, summer's arrived at long last. For the whole month of June, uh, we're continuing to uh, look at aspects of the work of the Holy Spirit. And tonight I have the privilege of looking at perhaps the greatest of his works, that of love. In the Passion Translation Bible, love is described as the motivation of our lives. And how true that is. Love, that little small four-lettered word that holds such passion and power. Love is the greatest, the most uh, uh, amazing, most powerful of all human emotions. It's something we all need and crave for, to love and to be loved. Where does love come from? In 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 uh, we read that God is love and God loved us long before we ever loved him. God proved his love for us by sending his son to be a pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. We are loved by a passionate God who has such a tremendous love for each one of us that this is the motivation, or should be, for us loving one another. Consider the love that a mother has for her child then multiply it by a million times and we just begin to catch a glimpse of how much God loves us. In fact, in John, 1 John 4, John says twice that God is love. At Jesus' baptism, we read that as soon as he went up out of the water, the heavens opened and the Spirit of God descended like a dove and rested on Jesus. And the Father spoke saying, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is the Spirit of love and remained in Jesus throughout his three years of ministry. He demonstrated his love for people, telling us to love our enemies and then putting it into practice when being nailed to the cross, he asked his father to forgive those who were hammering the nails into his hands and feet. One of the most detailed and beautiful descriptions of love uh, what love really looks like is found in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. He dedicates the whole of chapter 13 uh, to this wonderful subject of love. What he is basically saying here is that we can have all the spiritual gifts possible, but if we do not have love, uh, then we are or we have nothing. In verse 4 onwards, he tells us of this love, what it looks like, agape love. And again, using the Passion Translation, let me read what Paul writes. And he says this, Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessings come to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements, nor inflates its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect or, self, uh, or selfishness. It, uh, it, love is not easily irritated or quick to take offence. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best of others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it uh, never gives in. Love never stops loving, 
it extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. Love is more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long after words of knowledge are spoken. In the final verse of uh, chapter 13, Paul concludes with this amazing statement. He says, until then, there are three things that remain, faith, hope and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. Paul, of course, is, is describing God's love, not ours, but by the same token is giving us a pattern for the way that we should love. Love God, love one another, one another and love ourselves. In John 3.16 we read that wonderful verse that speaks about God's love for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Shortly before his death Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us forever. He promised not to leave us as orphans and that he would come to us. He calls us to love him and obey his commands. And Jesus goes on to say, he who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love him and show myself to him. In John chapter 15, Jesus implores us to remain in him. Without the Holy Spirit living in us, we will never bear fruit. It is the Holy Spirit's anointing that feeds us and allows us to bear fruit. In the same chapter, Jesus gives this command, Love each other as I have loved you. What is clear from Scripture is that love is the greatest and most precious thing we can have. Uh, John's first letter, it is say, is a great source of uh, demonstrating or writing about God's love. 1 John 3, chapter 1 begins with this staggering declaration. A declaration. How great is the love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called children of God. What an honour to be called a child of God. To love uh, as Jesus loved us, is, it will be a visible sign that we are his disciples and evidence of the Holy Spirit living and working in us. And don't forget, Jesus has promised to fill us and refill us over and over again with his Holy Spirit. We never need to run dry. And we can uh, ask him as often as we need that infilling. Well, God bless you. And thank you for listening this evening. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you soon. Bye for now.